Hey everybody, want to take a couple of minutes here to make the follow-up video to the solar powered workshop that I promised you uh, a couple of years ago. So let's get started. To my surprise, the system as a whole is holding up really well. The panels, batteries, inverters, and wiring are still in perfect working order. And aside from a little dust, cobwebs, and a squirrel nest inside the battery box, everything still looks as good as it did the day I installed them. There was some debate about whether mixing batteries of different sizes in the same bank would cause any issues, but after three years of being hooked up together and receiving the same charging current from the same charge controller, I've yet to see any degradation in battery performance. Since these are lead acid batteries though, it is important to test the fluid inside the batteries to ensure the proper concentration of acid to water, as well as the level of fluid inside the batteries. A low cell could indicate a problem with the battery and should be addressed quickly. The electronics and power distribution is still exactly the same as it was in the previous video. The only change that I've made to the system was removing the 250 amp circuit breakers that were installed between the fuses and the load. This was due to the fact that the breakers, though rated for 250 amps, would not carry that load continuously. After just a few minutes, the breakers would heat up to the point where they trip due to heat and not due to overcurrent. They were a redundant failsafe anyway, so I decided to rely on the fuses to break the circuit in the event of a short. Because I generally don't have a demand for a lot of power, I find myself using this smaller 750 watt inverter instead of the big 2000 watt monster for most jobs. Even though it was one of the least expensive inverters I could find, it has worked great and never failed. We had a windstorm here last summer that knocked out the power for three days. The small inverter worked fantastic to keep some fans running and for charging cell phones, while the big inverter was left pretty much unused. The total investment in this system is probably somewhere around $2,000 after all is said and done. What started off as a learning experience turned out to be a great way to provide stable, off-grid power for my workshop, and if I had it to do over again, I'd do it the same way. Buying the most expensive stuff when it comes to solar power isn't always the best way to go. In my case, going cheap really paid off. So there it is. That about wraps it up. I hope this information has been helpful for everybody. If you plan on doing this on your own and have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.